It was an Indonesian forensic team that found a vital piece of the Mitsubishi van used to carry the explosives, with a serial number the terrorists had neglected to scratch out. It led them to the van's owner, Amrozi. Once he was arrested, he gave the names of his fellow conspirators, including his own brother, Merklas. But it was the super-secret Australian Defence Signals Directorate, with its listening station near Darwin, that helped to pinpoint their location by eavesdropping on their cell phone calls and emails. Unlike their male counterparts, who are largely driven by ideology, female suicide bombers seem to have no common motivation. Some are driven to their fatal act by family links to Al-Qaeda and are seeking revenge. This video is of a confession by a failed female suicide bomber. She was detained in northern Iraq. Just 17 years old, she says she wanted to become a bomber after her husband was killed by anti-Al-Qaeda forces. She reached out to Al-Qaeda with her father's consent. Others are actively recruited. It's called the Kasaraka School. It's located in the town of La Roya, a town nestled high in the Andes Mountains of Peru. There are no entrance exams to get into this school, no interviews. The criteria for enrollment is poisoned blood. Every one of these children has severe lead poisoning. But these kids are the lucky ones. This is the reality for the rest of the children of La Roya schools in the shadows of smokestacks. It's no secret where all the lead's coming from, the Do Run Peru smelter. The smelter's operators know about the children with the lead poisoning. In fact, Do Run funds the Casaraca school, and it's touched off a battle pitting neighbors against each other and against Do Run. Human stories from around the globe impact your world. For Ethan Zahn, dribbling a football is second nature. But dribbling a ball while walking from Boston, Massachusetts to Washington, D.C. is a march of determination to bring attention to the HIV AIDS crisis facing children in Southern Africa and around the world. I lived and played professional soccer in Zimbabwe. And while I was there, I witnessed firsthand what was happening with HIV and AIDS and how it was really just destroying this community that I was a part of. You may remember Son from the hit TV show Survivor. So in Survivor? Yeah? Yes. Well, thanks, man. He won the third season, and it was on the show he pledged to use his winnings to make a difference. The grand prize of winning Survivor is a million bucks. So I use some of that money to start grassroots soccer. His charity uses the allure of the sport to educate. Seeing the, the, the power of soccer and the role models that this sport creates, it was really an easy formula where we can take these guys, send them into the classroom, and really have an impact on these young kids' life, really have the ability to change their behavior so they can go out there to lead a healthy lifestyle. So far, what started as a promise made on a TV reality show appears to be making a real difference in the lives of thousands of children.